Good afternoon, Rudy Colin here with TechOut. And as part of my networking series, um, I did some stuff with Alta Labs and their access points. I'm still waiting to get the switch for review, um, but that hopefully should be coming here shortly. In the meantime, I've actually replaced my Ubiquiti UDM Pro um, firewall router, gateway, combo, deal, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I've made my own PFSense, uh, OpenSense box. I'm actually running OpenSense on this right now. Um, this is the Mojinsox, Mojinsox um, mini PC right here. Um, it does come pre-installed from Amazon with PFSense. Um, I believe PFSense Plus, but their uh, PFSense has discontinued PFSense Plus for home and lab. Um, so you do have to change that over to uh, PFSense uh, CE Community Edition if you want to use that. Um, technically, you know, licensed and everything. Um, but I did plan on using OpenSense anyway, so that's the uh, first thing I did to this was install that. Um, pretty nice little unit here. I picked this up on Amazon for like $279. Um, this is the Intel Celeron J4125 uh, with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. That storage is on an M.2 uh, MSATA drive. It's not an NVMe, NVMe drive, um, but for this, it works just fine. We have four Ethernet ports here, um, and these are 2.5 gigabit Intel NICs right here. Um, and I do have 2 gigabit uh, service uh, for my ISP, um, so my modem comes in right here at 2.5 gigabits. Um, that's what my modem works at, um, is 2.5 gigabits. And then of course I have the two gigabit um, download speed. And then I have these connections right here bridged over on the LAN. Um, so you can plug in to any one of these three uh, for the LAN. Of course, if you wanna do load balancing um, or multi-WAN or whatever, you can configure those accordingly. But that's how I have mine set up because I only have one WAN and I just have one ethernet that goes off to a switch. Um, so I did take the bottom off this. I have it unscrewed here. Um, we're going to take a look here inside. I'll just show you guys around. Um, so pretty basic stuff, nothing too uh, fancy. We have some um, kind of off name brand memory right here, but it is a DDR4 um, stick of memory right here. And that is um, easily accessible and changeable. We've got your CMOS battery right here. Um, this is your storage. Like I said, it is M.2. Um, it's an M SATA drive. So it is SATA, not NVMe. Uh, you do have another PCI ex PCIe expansion slot right here. Um, if you want to expand, um, you can do a Wi-Fi card or a um, cellular antenna, I believe, and then you can put a SIM card right down here. Um, so you can do either or for those. And then we've got some headers over here. Um, it's kind of hard to see in the light, but we have SATA and SATA power, and they also do include this adapter right here. Um, so you can install a SATA uh, 2.5 inch drive if you want to and power it that way. Um, I believe they also do make a fan connector um, that can go into here for like a 12 volt fan and the bottom does have a uh, mounting point and screen on it for a fan so you should be able to fit, I believe it's like an 8010 uh, fan, 80 millimeter by 10 millimeter. Um, I'm not too sure if there's a actual dedicated fan header. Uh, Mojinsox Mojin did tell me that you can install a fan in this and power it via USB. Um, they did say some boards have fan headers on there, um, but I'm only seeing like front panel. Um, and there's a couple over here that I can't really tell what they are. Um, but if you're not using the SATA, I'm sure you can get an adapter to that because the SATA is a 12 volt and ground on two of those wires. Um, so if you just get a 12 volt fan, you should be okay there. Um, so not too much of an issue. Um, like I said, there's my RAM and everything right there. I might try to put, I think I have a Samsung um, stick of RAM that I might actually put in there. And then on the back here, we have, or I guess the front, I don't really know which is the front, which is the back, but um, got your power button, your USB 3.0 is right here. You have your HDMI and your VGA, and then a reset button. And if you want to install a Wi-Fi card with antennas, there are some antenna ports right here. Um, you just pop those out and you can stick your antennas right there so they come out of the metal chassis. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bottom back on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing put back uh, in my rack where it resides. And we'll go ahead and fire it up. Uh, one, so I have internet again. And two, I will show you guys uh, just kind of my OpenSense uh, configuration, interface, that kind of stuff, how it runs on here. Uh, I'm not gonna get too in depth with that because I am uh, pretty new at this. Um, so I've been playing around with it. I've actually had to pull this out three times now just to uh, reset my um, my network addresses and my uh, configuration on there so I can get access to it on the LAN again.
but we've got it working pretty well. I've got a DNS server running on here, um, as well as the intrusion prevention and detection, um, and it's running very, very well on there on the Intel 4125, so um, really not too many issues with that. It does boot back up when you plug it in, so if you uh, if your power were to go out or whatever and you don't have this hooked up to a UPS, um, it does boot on uh, on when your power is restored. Um, so very nice for a modem, of course, a router, of course, um, to do that. So if your power goes out while you're gone, it'll turn back on. But so far, no complaints about this box. Um, it's been working very, very well. Um, I am trying to get um, them to send me over one uh, with SFP Plus on it. Uh, so trying to work that out with the company, but maybe they will, um, and we can feature that on the channel, and I can do some more OpenSense configurations and stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna go get this thing powered back on, and we're gonna hop in over uh, to my computer and look at the OpenSense interface. All right, so here we are on the main dashboard. I'm not gonna get too terribly much into the OpenSense configurations and settings and what I've done on this video. I will be doing another video on OpenSense, um, kind of as a beginner, once I play around with it and learn a little bit more. Um, but I just want to show you guys how it's running on the Mojinsox uh, J4125 box. So as you can see here, uh, it is the Intel Celeron J4125, 2 gigahertz, 4 cores, 4 threads. We have, um, <coughs> excuse me, we have 8 gigs of memory right here. Now, uh, as far as CPU usage, that varies um, depending on network activity, uh, your traffic blocking, that kind of stuff. Um, your intrusion uh, detection and prevention. Um, my CPU usage ranges from about 1% to about 50%. Um, and again, that is a 2.5, uh, or sorry, a two gig connection, um, but only a one gig switch connected right now. So we'll have to test that again later when I get my um, my switch with SFP Plus so I can actually get my full two gigs across that switch. Um, but we're not using any swap. We're not using um, anything like that. So the memory is okay. Haven't really seen it go between, uh, it's about 25 to 30% of memory usage at any given time. Haven't really seen it go above that. Um, disk usage stays about 21% at, at 21 gigs um, with 107 uh, available um, after everything's all said and done. I do have some intrusion pro uh, detection prevention rules downloaded. Um, I actually got a lot of those as well as some rule sets for DNS blocking. Um, so that takes up a little bit of space as well as logging. Um, I have those logged as well as just some system logs and stuff like that. If I clear the logs out, it'll actually drop to about 3.5 gigs installed. Um, so that's going to be about your, uh, just your installed usage is about 3.5 to 4 gigs. And then um, the rest of your space is going to be determined on uh, how much logging you want to do. So if you want to log a lot of stuff and keep it for a long period of time, um, you're probably going to want more storage. Um, I would say 128 to 256 is probably plenty. Um, I have my logs set to a week for most things, um, and then I think default was like 31 days, but I really don't go back and look at it too much. I use it for uh, in-the-moment diagnostic purposes and just to see how things are going on. So I really don't need it more than a week. Um, I do have some things that are kept a little bit longer, but again, not getting into my OpenSense configuration too much right here. Um, I just want to show you guys how this is running on the J4125 uh, box from Mojinsox. And uh, that's how it's doing. It's doing pretty good. Like I said, I've been using this for two days now. I set it up a couple days ago. Um, and you can see here we have a, a spike on the CPU um, right there to 46%. But it will drop back down. The temperatures are pretty steady. Uh, you can see our traffic graph down here with our traffic uh, in and out. Um, and that is the uh, WAN and LAN. So it's showing both of those right there. Um, temperature right here, we've got Zone, which is the CPU package as a whole about 42.1 percent, uh, 42.1 degrees Celsius, sorry. Uh, and then we have the four cores right here, um, which is about 46. So uh, this down here is using the a, uh, ACPI uh, thermal sensor. Um, and then these up here are actually using the Intel driver. So they do vary a little bit, um, but you do get the individual core temperatures with that. So uh, it does support all that. Everything's been working just fine. Haven't had any issues with it. Um, was very easy to install. I uh, just put it on a flash drive. Uh, booted off the flash drive and installed it onto the internal um, M. SATA drive, and off we went. So, like I said, I'm gonna play with it a little bit more, and then I will do some actual OpenSense videos um, on how I configure things, what I'm doing, um, and that kind of stuff. And like I said, I'm a beginner at this kind of stuff with OpenSense. I was using Ubiquity for my home stuff before, and I was, you know, a beginner at that. I'm not any uh, network professional or anything by any means. I don't have any uh, training or schooling in this. Um, this is all hobby stuff that I do on my own time and I learn as I go. So um, 
that's what I want to do for you guys. I want to show you guys stuff that I've learned as I've gone. Um, so maybe it can help you guys with your setups as well if you're new at this um, and we can learn it together and uh, that kind of stuff. So if you have any questions, let me know down below. If there's anything you want to see, um, maybe that I've done before, um, let me know down below as well. And if it's something I know how to do, I will definitely give you guys some pointers and tips. I'm Colin Tech Out. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.